السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. This is Hani Ismail from Planning Engineer website. In this video, I would like to introduce the mini schedule Excel sheet. This Excel sheet I created because I need it in my daily work. So it is very simple. However, in my opinion, it is very effective as well. So what we have here, we have here the WBS. We have here the project name, building name, zone name. Activity ID, activity name, and the unit. Here we have the actual quantity and the planned quantity per week. Okay. The beauty of this sheet is that the planned quantity is automatically calculated. And the actual quantity, you can dump it in one sheet and all of these will be updated. We have here a, a grand total for columns. So in this week, we can know what was the planned, what is the actual, and we have here also some totals in the activity. So this activity, we have this total planned, and uh, total actual, and total plan. Okay, it looks like a simple sheet, and maybe you think it is can be done easily. The idea here that I have automated almost everything in this sheet. So okay, let's see how to create this sheet at, uh, in the first place. Here we have the data tab. You can dump your here activity ID, activity name. Then you will put here your project name, building name, zone, division of work, quantity, and the unit. And you can copy paste the planned start, planned finish from your Primavera or whatever. You can put it manually even. Okay? You can add as many rows as you want here. Once you finish this step, you need to copy the activity ID, planned start, Plan finish and put it here in the weekly distribution. This step will be done one time only. Once you paste it your data here, everything in this sheet will be calculated automatically. Let me explain to you. We have here week one. This is the weightage of week one. So we have here the planned start, planned finish, and this week one is ending 31st July. All of this is automated. You know, don't need to do anything. So the weight of week number one is 66.7, and the weight of week number two is 33.3. .3. How it was calculated? It was calculated uh, according to your inputs. So here in the settings, you need to define when the week will start, because this will give us when the week will end date. Let's say here we. Uh, uh, mentioned that the week will start on Saturday. So here you will find 30 July. 30 July should be a Friday. So here we have 30 July is a Friday. Let's say you need to make the week start date on Sunday. You change this one to Sunday and then you go here to refresh the data and you will find this date will be changed to Saturday. It should be 31st July. That's it. So here you can define the week start date. I prefer to make it Saturday, so my uh, cutoff date will be always Friday. Here also, we can define the weekend holiday. Let's say uh, that you are not working on Friday, you will choose Friday from here. If you are not working on uh, Saturday, you put it here, or Friday and Saturday, you can put both here. Okay, so here we are not working Friday, and here you can put the holidays. Why we need this one? In order to accurately calculate the weightage for each week okay so this week is uh, uh, ending 31st july okay here let's say we need to add one holiday so to check if this percentage or this quantity now this is the, now the percentage multiplied by total quantity for this week so we have here the weekly quantity let's say we have here 30 july is holiday Go to setting and I'll type here 30 July 2021. This number now should it change? Let's check. As you can see, it is changed because we add more weight to this week and less weight for this week as per our calculations here. So we put the data here. Now we need to put the actual. So we just need to put the activity ID. Week number. How to know the date of the week numbers? Very easy. 
you have here the week number and you have here the date. This is the ending date, as we said. So you need only to put in the actual activity ID, week number, actual quantity, and you will see it here in the proper place. Let's do one sample here. Let's say this activity, okay, we have some actuals in week number two. So I'll, I'll go to actuals, I'll put this activity, I'll put week two. You have to be careful, you have to make it like this exactly, WK02, okay? And I'll put here, let's say 25 as a quantity. Then I'll go to the schedule, refresh, refresh all. We should see here the quantity now we just added. As you can see here, the actual quantity already added. This sheet is very useful when you have a, a, a small uh, activity uh, distributed in different zones or different buildings, and you need to create a simple yet effective and very accurate schedule for it. However, I would like to advise you with something. Don't mix units. So we have here the filter because we need to compare apple to apple. I cannot say I did 50 and uh, or 25 and I should do 40. And in the total, I did 50 out of 395. Of what? You should have the same unit. That's why we have here some nice filters. You can filter by building name, by division of work, by unit, by activity name. But be sure when you present this report, use only one unit. So let's say the linear meter. In that case, I'm telling an accurate information. I'm telling I did five out of 66 of this activity and the quantity in linear meter. Also, I can filter here by building. So I can filter this building only. And whenever I'm happy with the result, I can hide the unnecessary quorum. And this is ready for printing. Very simple. However, in my opinion, it is very effective. And uh, in order to combine the actual and the planned in one table, and the planned values is automatically calculated, this is, in my opinion, very nice option. Please check this sheet. Tell me what you think. And we can develop it even further upon your request. And you can find the link below this video to download this sheet. Thank you very much. See you in the next lesson.